yesterday we have discussed about the temperature the change in the temperature how the change in temperature affects the state of matter how it overcome or you can say that how it brings about the changes in the states of matter to know something more about this temperature let us discuss something new about this temperature in the junior classes we have discussed about the unit of this temperature that is degree celsius we have discussed okay but now one more unit i am going to introduce which is the biggest unit or si unit of the temperature which is known as kelvin okay so in this ninth class you will be studying about this kelvin basically kelvin is the bigger unit as compared to degree celsius and we are having one formula for the comparison of it that is kelvin temperature in kelvin scale is equals to temperature in degree celsius you have to add 273 so that it will be converting into kelvin scale it means 273 is the number you have to add in the degree celsius temperature so that you will be getting the temperature in kelvin scale because kelvin scale is the biggest one and you have to add some number to make it equivalent 0 degree celsius is equivalent to 273 kelvin temperature this is the relation these two are the relation which you have to learn to do the conversions okay now after this temperature the next we are having how this temperature affect different states of matter okay and whenever we are increasing the temperature or whenever we are decreasing the temperature where this heat go let me give you one simple example start melting the ice you will be observing whenever this melting process is going on there is no rise in the temperature you are giving the heat energy but still there is no rise in temperature the reason is this heat energy which we are providing this heat energy is utilized by the molecules of ice to break their force of attraction to overcome this force of attraction they need to break their bond then only they can be free to move and to convert it into liquid state okay the same happens with the liquid molecules whenever you try to boil the water okay what will happen these this heat energy which we are providing to the water this heat energy is being utilized by the liquid molecules or water molecules to overcome the forces of attraction so that they become more free to come into gaseous state so where this heat energy comes from or where this heat energy gone this heat energy is a part which is known as hidden heat energy and in the chemistry language the term which we are using for this hidden heat that is latent heat the term which is used for the hidden heat that is known as latent heat okay how can we describe this word latent heat this latent heat basically is defined as the heat energy which is utilized or which is used to convert one state to another state okay for example we are having the process fusion how can you define the latent heat of fusion first of all you have to remember fusion process which we have discussed fusion is what fusion is con uh, conversion of solid into liquid state and to convert solid into liquid state what we need we need some heat energy to give and this heat energy which we are providing for the solid to convert into liquid is known as latent heat of fusion latent heat of fusion so how can you define it latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat energy required to convert 1 kg solid into liquid state without con without rise in the temperature okay the same with vaporization vaporization is a process in which liquid molecules convert into vapors and the amount of heat which is required for this process again it is known as latent heat but here latent heat of vaporization the latent heat of vaporization again we can define it as the amount of heat energy which is required to convert one liquid one liter or one kilogram of liquid into vapor again without rise in the temperature this concept you have to learn this concept is very very necessary and very very important likewise i'm giving a simple example if you will be comparing boiled water and steam 
you will be seeing and you will be observing the steam causes more severe burn as compared to boiled water the reason is steam or vapors are having more heat energy as compared to boiled water okay that's why they cause more severe burn as compared to boiled water molecules the one more example i'm giving you suppose you are having ice and you are having cool water but still you prefer ice over cool water to get cooling effect by again the reason but here you can give two reasons here one the latent heat of fusion is more in cooling water or second the latent heat of fusion is less in ice ice mein wo kam hota hai aur water mein wo zyada hota hai agar heat kam hogi to naturally cooling effect kya hoga zyada got it so on the basis of this again we are having some more question explain why steam causes more severe burn as compared to boiled water and second ice ha is having more cooling effect as compared to cold water okay you have to give and you have to learn the reasons for these two questions more fine so today i am giving you some of the question important question from the topics which we have discussed earlier until that time first question please note down these questions i am giving you first question should be the very first question should be in your notes matter the definition of matter second the physical nature of the matter third characteristics of the particles which make a matter okay there are some reasoning questions likewise why gas is having more compressibility okay why wooden table is considered as solid and iron almira is considered as solid water is liquid at room temperature again why explain it now the next question we are having define the terms first term diffusion second term latent heat third latent heat of fusion fourth latent heat of vaporization okay so please note down these questions again and please start doing these question as assignment okay and please don't forget to subscribe and like the channel so that you will be getting notification for my upcoming videos thank you